All righty. Well, welcome to our after party, everyone. Just want to let you know you can feel free to keep that chat box going during this special session. But for this Q&A, we got a couple of rules that we want you to try to stick to as much as possible so we can get you the answers that you're looking for from our wonderful group of panelists today. Um, if you have a question that you would like to submit and have someone from our esteemed group of A-listers uh, answer it, please write that question in the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you have a question for a specific panelist, then please include their name in your question and we'll make sure to direct it to them. And if you'd like to remain anonymous, then you can feel free to just check that box um, before you submit your question for the Q&A. And like I said, guys, we're gonna do our very best to get you as many answers to the questions that you submit as time allows. But to kick things off, I do believe that mom boss, you wanted to kick off this Q&A, right? You got a question lined up. I absolutely do. My question is for Mr. Gary Bensavanga. I have been wanting to know this for years and years. So I'm gonna, I'm sure most of you wanna know it too. Um, I have heard that Gary, you were one of the original writers who got your mailers or clients to actually agree to royalty arrangements. I, uh, and I mean, there was a life before royalties. What can you please um, elaborate, share with us how that kind of came about? Well, I got a very good training in copywriting at Ogilvy and Mather as I believe uh, David Deutsch did as well in their direct response division. Uh, but I always wanted to be the captain of my own destiny and have uh, not be reliant on just one employer's income. So I wanted to go freelance. And um, before I did, I, sp I got to know Dan Rosenthal. Clayton knew him as well. And uh, Dan taught me that um, there are two different clients. And when we talk about royalties, um, it really depends on what your goal as a copywriter is. Um, sure, you can get rich with royalties, but let me give you the background of the two different types of clients that, as Dan explained it to me, uh, Dan said that uh, when I joined his small agency after Ogilvy and Mather, um, uh, Dan said, well, I, I said to Dan, why don't we go after some big clients like Time Life, the big publishers. We were in driving distance of Midtown Manhattan. We can give a presentation. He said, no, no, no. At our agency, we don't do this. First, understand advertising is multiplied salesmanship. And at our agency, we get paid like salespeople. That means when they're making money, we make money too. It's not just fee, it's just not production cost plus a certain percent as most agencies, we wanna grow with the sales. Ah, okay, so that, and that meant that we went after different clients. So uh, if you've ever noticed on, if you watch Shark Tank, you'll notice that sharks don't care about paying a fee. They, they'll pay you a dollar all day long if you're making them two. And um, they're much more wheeler dealer. And so they're much, that type of client is much more willing to, to give you a royalty arrangement or, or partic a profit participation. So at Dan's agency, we started going after really all of those people who are more, much more entrepreneurial. And that's what you have to decide. Before you uh, do anything in, in your copywriting career, decide on what your goals are. You know, the, the most important the most important part of achieving a goal is just defining what you want. So if you want security through copywriting, there are many jobs like that in many different companies. Almost every advertising agency and company needs copywriting or marketing writing of some type. And you'll get a good salary, a good fee, you know, if you do go freelance. But if you want to make royalties, look for the entrepreneurs. And so that's what we did at Dance Company. Then finally, when I went out on my own, um, without any agency around me, because I realized that many of the clients of all types were bringing media buying in-house. They were bringing even design in-house. All of those things that they could easily hire people for. Uh, but the one thing that was so hard to find was good direct response copy. And so we, and then later by myself, we, we sought out those clients who live by a very simple motto, we sell or die. In other words, um, in, in many companies, there's a dealership, like with a car, uh, there's a dealership to uh, do most of the selling. Uh, or there's a restaurant that, you know, you walk into and try it. 
Um, so there's a, a, or Salesforce that goes out and beats the bushes. But there are a lot of clients for whom the copywriter is life or death. And if they're entre entrepreneurial kinds of companies, you, you'll do very well in negotiating, especially if you try if they try you and you produce a winner. Well, then you just have your negotiating power greatly raised. So when I went out on my own, I, uh, I, I was paid fees for a while. And then when I did produce some winners, uh, my dance card started uh, filling up. And uh, so then I said, well, now I'm booked for a year in advance. Uh, anybody who comes in a year and a week later, they're going to have to pay a royalty. And then that dance card started getting filled up. So, you know, winners are the currency of negotiation in direct marketing. Uh, for copywriters. So if you produce enough winners, and back then it wasn't the competition that Clayton helped create. And so <laughs> it, was the, it, was, it was much easier. Uh, there weren't as many uh, uh, you know, copywriters who were, were trained that way. So that's, that's what started with me. So I would you know, love to open that conversation if anybody's interested. I would love to know how it's done today. Because about six, I retired about 16 years ago when uh, you know I was at that sixty, and I was, you know, we had all the money we need, uh, but I still love copywriting. So then we, Paul and I had a new goal of you know having some kind of retirement business, and we hooked up with a, a brilliant, amazing young entrepreneur named T.J. Robinson, who is still a partner to this day. So I get to write my copy for our own products. T.J. runs a magnificent business, uh, and we are. Uh, you know, three ha very happy partners, uh, my wife, Pauline, I, and, and TJ Robinson, and he's gotten married, and we love his wife, Megan, who is also a great salesperson. So we have a wonderful little company, and we produce, uh, you know, we, 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 we produce great copy for it, because uh, that's all I get to do. So <laughs> that's what I love. So anyway, but those are the goals. See, that, that was another goal I wanted after, after royalties, but uh, that's, you know, you, you, you get your royalties from the most entrepreneurial marketers. Yeah, you know, the, the, the bottom line is, you know, you want to work with a client who's, who values what you're doing and says, hey, if I'm making money, I want you to make money. And it's a win-win. Yeah. If you watch you Shark know? Tank, you'll see how it's normally done That's just it. on right. the spot. That, if you're dealing I, I with entrepreneurial people. Yeah. From, yeah. yeah from but if you one, go to a, a major Fortune 500 company and try to get the advertising manager to give you royalties, he or she may faint. You know, that's yeah. so far above their decision-making level, it's not going to happen. They have a fee structure, and they usually don't, you know, cotton to royalties. So you got to decide the kind of client you want. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Okay, I will turn it over back to you, Sierra. Thanks very much. Awesome. This is so much fun. I like this job. Uh, so these, I got two questions next for Caleb. We're going to try to group them together as best as possible. Um, Caleb, we had uh, someone that was talking about wanting a little bit more on uh, discussing the process of deep customer research. Uh, do you have any tips or, or tricks for that that you can help with some of our ones that are eager to research? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, start with your, your top three to five competitors. Um, your top three to five competitors, you don't, you don't, you're not a top three to five competitor by accident. You're, you're, you're ruling the roost because you figured it all out. You you know everything there is to know. You know what to say to make people buy, which is the bullseye, you know, in this game. So if you want to know what to say to make people buy, then you, you study your competitors because those guys are doing it at a very, very high level. So when you find a competitor and you reverse engineer what they're doing, you're going to learn everything that you need to know about the prospect. If you can find a webinar, a video sales letter, you know, uh, a long form sales letter, a direct mail package, whatever it may be, if you can find a, an advertisement that is moving the masses, then you can usually learn, not usually, you can 100% of the time learn massive key uh, insights and intel on who your prospect is and what needs to be said to that prospect to move that prospect to action. Um, that's a really, really good tip. Um, another really good thing is, you know, you should, uh, you should spend time with your prospect. You should put two or three or 400 people into a Facebook group. You should drip on them with a little bit of value and ask them 
tons and tons and tons and tons of questions. Just make sure who you target is your, your prospective buyer and not some other prospect in the market. But if you provide value to people in a group, they will stick around, they'll hang out in the group. And you can then ask them questions, very valuable, deep, penetrating questions that can help you build your sales message. Um, like what went on in your life recently that caused you to want to take action on X? You know, what, what happened in your life recently that caused you to want to start losing weight on the keto diet? Um, you know, what's the biggest frustration you have with X? Um, you know, what, what are you worried is going to happen if, you know, you don't X? Um, these are all very, very powerful key insights that you can learn. I think it was Clayton or else, I think it was Clayton I learned this from, the six reasons why people buy. They buy because they have a want, a need, a desire, a fear, a frustration, and, or a problem. And if you can cater all of your questions around those six things when directly talking to the people that are going to buy, then you're going to learn massive information from them, information that, that no one else has in the marketplace. And everybody else is assuming a lot of stuff in their advertising. If you can just be the person who gets rid of all assumptions and you can learn from the horse's mouth what it is the horse is saying and what it is the horse wants, then the likelihood of you being able to create winning advertising from a place of a deep, knowledgeable understanding of the six reasons why people buy, if you can understand that from your prospect, if you know that about your buyer, then you're so far ahead of the game. You're so far ahead of people who even might be more sophisticated than you, people who might have way more bells and whistles than you have in your advertising, but you can still mop the floor with them. So it's a massive topic. It's, it's a forever kind of conversation, and everyone will have their own different opinions and insights on it. But the two biggest things for me is, number one, I want to study my top three to five competitors because they know everything. They have what I don't have. You know, they they have all the answers to my questions. So I want to study them. I want to buy everything they have to offer. I want to reverse engineer everything that they're doing. I want to screen capture all of their ads, um, I, everything. I want to find out everything about those guys because they know everything about my prospect. Otherwise, they wouldn't be a top three to five competitor. And then from there, I usually just get two to three to four hundred of my exact buyers into a Facebook group and I, I, I drip on them for maybe several months. Uh, if I'm truly getting into a niche, I might drip on them, give them value, you know, give them uh, tips and secrets and ideas, make it a valuable community. And that allows me then to, you know, ask them questions and get intelligent answers. And then it's a triangulating. I love that word. It's a triangulating of data. If you start to ask enough questions, you start to patterns start to show, you start to kind of get an understanding of the, the large governing desires, the large governing interests, the large governing problems. Um, I can't emphasize how valuable that is. It's massive. It's massive because, you know, as Clayton so impressively has demonstrated in almost every package, um, if you can speak to your prospect in a way that makes them feel like you truly, truly understand everything about what's going on in their life, a bomb is going to have to go off in the room to distract them from your advertising. It's one of the ultimate skills to have is the ability to truly understand what it is that's going on in your prospect's life and, and be able to talk to them about it in a way that's moving them towards a fast, easy solution. Um, so those are two things that I think is most powerful in my perspective. I think that's very valuable information for everybody that was asking about research for sure. And then Ramon wanted to know which of Clayton's uh, promotions did you find uh, to be the best in your training? Oh, that, there's loads. Um, you know, the, the three that really stand out to me as, as wow, were the, the first uh, chelation pill Magalog, the 23 cent lifesaver heart doctors never tell you about. Um, that, that, as I said, was like a piece of alien technology. It was, it was so vastly ahead of everything at the time. It was, it was just so transformational. And I still think to this day, it's so transformational that that is brilliant. But you have to look at that holistically. The colors of that were brilliant. 
uh, like the, everything about that was so optimized. The, the color scheme I came to learn years later that that color scheme is, is a genius color scheme for conversion. So everything about that was just optimized to the nth degree. Um, the next evolution of that was a Magalog. It was 80% testimonials. And again, it was just a game changer. And it was the evolution of that. It was, um, the headline was, my doctor says I have a new heart. Again, dominant emotion, you know, headline that has interest, has a problem, an urgent problem. Like there's so much in that. There's so much in just every last element of those two packages to be learned. There's just so, so much there. And then one of my favorites is invest without fear. Invest without fear is, is kind of a masterclass in, in, in advertising. Um, the level of depth that he went to in understanding who that prospect was. And, and I, I just think it was genius. I, I, I just think um, he was a genius. He was a genius. And it's, he's not a copywriter. It was the same with Halbert. You know, copywriter is not the word to apply to these guys who really understand things so holistically. Um, you know, a copywriter is kind of limited in my mind. It's a limited term to describe what actually the job is. Um, he was not a copywriter. He was, he was an alchemist. He was a, an absolute strategist. Um, and uh, somebody, as I said, that, that there's years of education in, in studying his, his advertising. I think I'm waffling there now. Thank you. you did good, Caleb. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waffling on. If I if I get the opportunity, I'll keep talking. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Can worries. I cut him off? Can I cut him off? Uh, <laughs> I, you got to shut him up, or else he'll keep going forever. Brian knows. Yeah, Brian yeah. knows. You just got to, especially when he's drinking. But when jump he's... in and shut me up. <laughs> um, can I can I just add on to something on research? Go for it. So uh, from the marketing side, I mean, I'm I'm not the copywriter in the room, so I know I know how important research is in marketing or copywriting. I'll just add a couple of things just to add on. Caleb nailed it. But first of all, I mean, I learned from Dan Kennedy, you know, the, I, the concept of marketing by walking around. And so Caleb talked about that you have to walk around in the environment and meet your prospects. And there's a lot of different ways to do that in addition to creating your own Facebook group and then asking them questions, which is brilliant. So I'll give you a couple. One is that customer service is marketing, by the way. Anybody who doesn't think customer service is marketing is barking up a wrong tree. So if customer service is marketing, then you absolutely need to do things like sit in on customer service calls, hear what the customers are bringing you. You know, dripping content to them and getting their opinions is one side of it, but just let them free fall. I mean, you sit in on customer service calls, you will know everything about your customers that you are not going to learn. At boardroom, we had, you know, we had huge, you know, we had a nine million name database. So, you know, we had people calling in all the time. But I used to listen in on on phone calls because I just wanted to hear what real people were saying. Going back to, you know, lists are people too, you know, customers are people too. And so you need to get on the ground with them as often as you can. In addition, you can also, with the, in terms of competitors, be a secret shopper with your competitors. So go into um, your competitor's market, buy their newsletter, buy their book, buy their supplement, do everything, then break it, then break it to, break it to hell, you know, uh, return it, um, ask for a refund and just see how they handle it and then see how you might wanna handle it because that's how you're gonna keep customers for life and not sell one, one shot after another. So you must understand the underlying causes of how you lose a customer, not just how you get a new one. So I believe that, and, and you can hire some people in your own company as a secret shopper. So you get somebody who can buy into your company, break everything, do everything wrong, just screw it up. And then at every step, every time they're screwing something up, have them keep a journal and they answer one question. How did that make me feel? And you will get the most amazing feedback by asking a customer or a secret shopper, how did it make me feel when I called up and the person on the, on the line was a jerk 
and didn't give me any satisfaction and what the backup of that was. Um, in addition, as far as just, you can create Facebook groups, like Caleb said, but you can also be a stalker in Facebook groups. Find the forums, find the Facebook groups where your customers are hanging out. Be a fly on the wall. Maybe ask a question here and there and see how they respond. Now, I'm not a copywriter, but as a copywriter, this is gold because then you get the language that they're speaking in. So now you're going to get language things. You're going to get all sorts of things that you'll never get anywhere else. And then finally, Amazon reviews. Try to find the books that, again, this is marketing by walking around. You find the books that the, the customers that you're going after buy and read and read the one-star reviews and the five-star reviews. You will get gold from that. You will get like, I, mean, I did a blog post once. I took all, I, I just did the, I had like six one-star reviews of my book. So I just, I just analyzed each one. It was very cathartic, I have to tell you. You know, to, I, I, besides everything else, having someone tell you, you know, Brian, you're like grandpa telling me the same crap over and over again, or Brian, you're, you know, what that, are that me. That not, not one piece of information was relevant. And just to like, take it in, like, I wasn't going to argue with the guy that the guy hated me. Well, God bless him. He's allowed, you know, you got to have haters. If you, you're not doing it, you're not doing enough if you don't have haters. So I really believe that there are just, and, and again, as Caleb said, research is an unending, it's not a rabbit hole. It's actually, it's, a, it's tunnels of information and the best copywriters. And I'm looking at some of them right here, you know, Gary Bensabenga, Carlene, Kim, uh, Marcella, Lori, Kevin, Caleb, um, you know, Paris, you know, you, you got to get, you got to get ugly with your research. I mean, you got to, I mean, I'll just, I'll end with this. Paris knows this story. But when I was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 2008, the second call I made after, and there's 700 people on this call, so not everybody's heard this story. Everybody on the speakers, you've all heard this story. And Paris is sick of this story. But, <laughs> but I, 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 got, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 2008. I went to, after, my, after I hung up with my urologist with the diagnosis, my first call, as opposed to calling a specialist, calling anybody, was to Paris Lampropolis. Why? Because I know that he did the research on every single alternative health, um, cure, not cure. Well, in his, his packages, they were cures. They're not cures. But, but, the, but every prostate cancer treatment alternative, and I would know after a call with Paris, and he was playing my doctor. I had to pay him like, like a huge consulting fee because he was charging me like my doctor. That was awful, Paris. I can't believe you did that to me. So, so he gave me... <laughs> He gave me the most incredible information on everything I needed to know. Why? Because he's a goddamn copywriter. And he's, a, he's an A-list a copywriter who knows how to do research. So just give you an indication with a, a little bit of, a little. Now, yeah, um, no, I now, think we got it nailed. I think that like between you and Caleb, we have all research questions that yeah, are like I'm, nailed I'm for done. right now. Um, so no more questions I, on I research. Didn't, I didn't drift as much as you, Caleb, so screw you. <laughs> make it clear that he's joking when he says that I charge the money. <laughs> and I'm not a doctor, I'm a copywriter, and I do not give medical advice. No, yeah. okay, that, yeah, but you also, you're a copywriter who plays a doctor in direct mail. In direct mail, yeah. <laughs> There's <Yeah>. that. <laughs> All right, so I have, um, I have a question for Kim next, and then I have one to uh, hopefully throw at Wendy if it's okay. Um, for Kim, there was several people that were asking you to talk a little bit more about uh, the five features and benefits exercise. Okay. Um, step number one, list out all the features of your product. What does it do, right? What are all the things it does? You know, what's, and then, I mean, you can make an exhaustive list, right? Even things you may not think are super important. Step number two, ask why. Why is that feature in there? Okay. Um, it has a three-speed dial in the air purifier. Why? So you can control the speed of air. Okay. And then benefit is the third step. Identify the benefit associated with that feature, you know, so you can blank, right? Um, I'm just trying to keep it short because I know we got a lot of questions here. Number, step number four, dimensionalize that benefit. What does it look like? What does life look like once you have that benefit, right? 
you don't have to worry about this or that, or you're, you know, you're, you're, you're free from worrying about like paying your bills at the end of the month or whatever it is. Like, let's say it's a financial product feature. Okay. So you dimensionalize that benefit and just, and this is where, you know, you, you read Clayton's copy, you can see like, this is what he did. He fleshes it out to that nth degree, right? Then um, I'm going to forget. Okay. Fifth one, the most important one of all is link it to a dominant resident emotion. Okay. So we all have these different resident emotions and they're, they're definitely like the drivers of our behavior, our motivations to buy or to, you know, to maybe solve a problem or to, you know, maybe to gain, maintain control of our own lives or to look successful or, I mean, there's so many different emotional um, dominant emotions and motivators. So you link each of those dimensionalized benefits to a dominant resident emotion. And then you rank those emotions at the end by which ones are the most powerful for this particular prospect, for this product, for this solution. And then you would then ideally want to structure your copy in that way with that level of emphasis. I'm gonna lead with this one. I'm gonna maybe get into this one next, right? And then when you're done with this whole exercise, if you've done it properly, and again, you don't do this until you've done a lot of exhaustive research on you know, who your prospect is and all those other things you know, some of the other speakers talked about. Right. And then when you get to this point, you're going to have like three or four pages, at least, or 10 pages or 12 pages of just amazing notes. And then you're just going to take all that and you're going to start weaving that into your copy. These are going to be like your copy, uh, various copy points that you want to make. And then, you know, it's like almost half your work is done right there by the time you get to that point, if you've done it right. I hope that explains it. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Kim.